Here is Josh Hart on the Tibbs question that everybody, the hot topic of the offseason. And let's talk about it because Josh Hart, I thought, really, really made some great points. You and Tibbs, though, where he told you you'd play more minutes or you'd be nah. playing full games? Nah. You know, first and foremost, like, probably like five, six times a game with just looking like, yo, are you good? You need a sub? You need something? And I'm like, it was like, the point I'm like, yo, if I need something, I'll come to you. I'll, say, I'll, I'll let you know if I'm, I need a sub or something. If not, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. But it was just one of those things like you just, you know, once you once you have guys going down, it's like I I gotta I gotta pick my stuff up. I got I gotta step up and I gotta I gotta go out there and hoop. And if you know during playoff time, it's like I I gotta push my body to to the max. You know, to to the point where you know it, it's either you know it, it's it's my body shutting down. And that was you know my thought process was I'm I'm a you know, and go until until the wheels fall off. Yeah. And that was just kind of my mentality. All-star break to to the last game of the season. Do you? What'd he say? And look, some people might say, what 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 else is he going to say? Is he going to say, yeah, Tibbs, Tibbs is, is uh, you know, driving me crazy here. But he said, look, I'll let you know when I need a, a, a breather. I'll let you know. So the idea that, like, the players are just, like, helpless and Tibbs is running these guys into the ground. Hey, this is a player's league. All you got to do is raise your hand, right? You raise your hand, you come out the game. Jamal Crawford was on this platform. What did JC say when I, when I asked him about Tibbs and, and the minutes things in Minnesota? He said, look, players want to play. Players want to play. So I, I, I just don't see it, man. But here's Josh Hart saying, listen, it was his choice. K-Dot, he just submitted it was his choice to stay on the floor, not the coaches. And he said, look, I'm going to go to the wheels fall off. It's an endurance test, the NBA playoffs. So that was one thing that he said there. <clears throat> now, here is, here is more on Hart on on Tibbs. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up on for you boys. With, I think sports in general. Once you get a label, it's almost impossible to get, you know, to to change that label or change that narrative. Yeah. So it might have been like that in Chicago or Minnesota, wherever it was. But since, you know, my year, year and a half I've been here, man, it's, it'd be light. It'd be, <laughs> it'd be chill. Like, we'll do, like, we probably went live maybe, like, six, seven times this whole season. During practice, most of the time it's it's more mental. It's more, I right, we're we're running through these plays. We're you know doing twenty five passes, figuring out like if if Jalen gets blitzed or if if Julius gets blitzed, where are we supposed to be? And it's more the mental um, part where you have to lock in with his practice. It's not really physical. We're not running up and down. We're not doing much. And from coming from me, someone that hates practice, like I, I hate practice, bro. I hate doing like this. Turn them lights on at seven thirty at the garden. I'm good. Yeah. But you know, for me, I'm like, oh, this is this is it. Oh, we good. Like we cool. I, I'm I'm chilling. So. So there was Josh Hart saying basically, yeah, you're gonna go hard in games, but in practices, they're primarily walkthroughs. Mental preparation. Looking into each scenario. What happens if this happens? Your counters, right? Working on the counters. And that's one of the things that Tibbs have mentioned over the years since he's been here in terms of managing minutes and load management. He said, look, yeah, you might go hard in games, but there's ways to limit the amount of wear and tear in players' bodies. We're in 2024. Guys aren't practicing. When he said we did six or seven lives all year. They're not going at each other like that in practice, just like after games. This ain't the 90s where you're putting in two-a-days, right? Riley, Riley might have put you in the Knicks through two-a-day. We talk, remember when Xavier McDaniel was on this show and, and talked about that. You know, day after games, they're going in two-a-days. So, again, this is according to these guys. I'm not the minutes police. I'm not the minutes doctor. I'm just saying from the professionals, from the guys that are doing it, there's ways to manage your playing time. Now, another, another point that Hart made, which I thought was excellent, 
was one that I've been driving home here the entire playoffs when I'm going after the Tibbs, the Tractors, and the, and the Minutes Police. This is what Hart had to say here. And he was absolutely right. Let me make sure I got the numbers right here. This is Josh Hart from the Pivot Podcast. Go ahead and check it out. Full interview, great interview there by Ryan Hawk and the boys. Here's Josh Hart. If you look at the injuries we had this year, you know, Julius basically falling. You know, someone trying to take a charge, he falls, you mm-hmm. know, on his shoulder. Freak incident. Bogey, unfortunately, like Nick Batum, tried to die for a loose ball. You know, caught a piece of his ankle. Freak incident. Mitch, you know, you know, stress injuries. You know, those are tough ones. You know, Jalen breaking his hand. Freak incident. You know, OG pulling his hamstring. You know, he's going full speed for you know to try to get a ball. You know, you never know what's gonna happen. So you know, a lot of the injuries we had were freak incidents, and then it's like, all right, we got seven, eight healthy players, and then you mad at a dude for playing six. It's like. As y'all know, sometimes the seven or eighth guy or ninth guy, like they're not ready yet. They might be, they have the potential to be, but they're at this point in time, they might not be ready. Then we talk about that. No, those those are fluke injuries. The Julius one. Brunson breaking his hand. OG hamstring happened to ta- Halliburton. Halliburton's out right now with a hamstring. Where, where is all the people blaming Rick Carlisle for the, the breakneck pace that the Pacers play at? That injury that put their star point guard on the shelf. I just I just never saw the direct correlation. Is it possible? Absolutely. I just never saw the direct correlation between, you know, player injuries as a result of just playing a lot and a lot. I don't know. I, I'm, I, I'm not in the medical field. But here's Josh Hart saying... That these injuries are fluke. The Bogdanovich injury was absolutely a fluke injury for from an injury prone player. Mitch. And then what did Hart say after that? You're down so many bodies. Tips ain't going to Diakite and Daquan Jeffries in a high stakes playoff game. No chance. Trust. Didn't that Josh Hart say that? Trust. Tibbs has to trust the guys to deliver. Hell, my guy Burks <laughs> lost the trust. And then he got it back. Almost saved the team. Imagine Burks Hive saved the team in game seven. I would have been obnoxious on this channel for we. I would have been still been talking about that to today. I wouldn't have heard the end of it. So, you know, the idea that we're just gonna go to the end of the, <laughs> the end of the end of the end of the bench, it's not gonna happen. If you think about what this team looked like in its totality as a unit. Let's take, let's say Julius and all these guys are all healthy and you're going into the playoffs against Philly. You have 11 potential guys that you can play. That's more than the average playoff roster, rotation, playoff rotation. So you lose Julius, you lose Bogey, you lose Mitch, you lose OG. We're really going to look at and say, hey, how come the the real 12, 13, 14, 15 man on the roster didn't play in the playoffs? I, I just don't see how, how that's logical. You know, I don't see it. And that was Josh Hart, verse for verse, bar for bar, basically saying the same thing. <laughs>